Hey guys, Dusty here. As of today, I have over 200 miles on my pair of Nike Invincible 3s, and I thought now would be a good chance to give my full review. So like always, I'll go over the basic specs and then my experience using the shoe over the past few months while I racked up a couple of hundred miles. And with that being said, we'll get right into it. Uh, the Nike Invincible 3 is a neutral road running shoe, and I would put it in the category of Max Cushion Daily Trainer. Speaking of Max Cushion, it has a max stack height of 40 millimeters in the rear 31 in the forefoot for a heel to toe drop of nine millimeters my men's size eight and a half weighs in at 9.95 ounces or about 280 grams the fly knit upper on the shoe is just okay um, it feels plasticky to the touch um, i haven't had any real big issues with it it's comfortable enough um, it is very durable though, which is a huge plus. There's quite a bit of structure in the heel counter. There is this plastic heel clip at the rear uh, that helps give it a little bit of added stability. And for those of you wondering, yes, the insoles are removable. Now we'll talk about the fit of the shoe, which I'll say has certainly been a touchy subject. Now the shoe is true to size. I'd say width is pretty average, although it is a little bit narrow in the midfoot. So if you know you need a wider width, especially more so in the midfoot of the shoe, um, this might not be a good option for you. Now the big problem with the fit of the shoe that so many people have hesitations about getting it or have had issues with the shoe is the heel slippage. And I will say I absolutely experienced this the first couple of runs I had with the shoe. My foot was sliding in and out of the back of the shoe like crazy. But honestly, after my first couple of runs in the shoe, it totally went away. First of all, there is that extra eyelet at the rear so you can tie these up using the runner's knot or the heel lock and that really snugs your foot in a lot more securely and then I think honestly the padding in the heel of the shoe just started to mold to my foot after a couple of runs and now I don't even think about my heel slipping around in the shoe. Then the midsole on the shoe you're getting a huge slab of Zoom X foam. Uh, it's some of the best midsole foam and material out there. Uh, super soft, squishy, bouncy. I will say though I don't find the ride of the Nike Invincible 3 this one quite as bouncy as the uh, Nike Invincible 1. But overall, that feeling that so many of us love from the Zoom X foam is certainly present in the shoe. Then if we move along to the outsole, uh, quite frankly, I love this outsole. So far, over 200 plus miles, my outsole is showing very, very little wear. So one, this outsole is very durable, and two, it grips quite decently as well. Um, I have no issues with the shoe slipping around when there's wet pavement. And honestly, for a max cushion daily trainer, what more could you want in an outsole? All right, now my experience running in this shoe. First of all, do I think the Nike Invincible 3 is a versatile shoe? Personally, in my opinion, no, it's not, I don't think it's versatile at all. I keep this shoe only for easy runs, long runs. For me, it just feels a bit too big and bulky and doesn't give quite enough snap or uh, energy return to make me really want to pick up the pace. But this shoe can be used as a mileage workhorse and I think it works really great as that. The feeling of this shoe over 200 miles hasn't changed at all since when I originally got it. Um, the dirt, the outsole is holding up really well. So I would imagine that the midsole is gonna die out way before the uh, outsole will start to show significant amounts of wear. And actually, if you look at the midsole on the medial side of my shoe, you can see quite a bit of creasing so far. But like I mentioned, the ride and the feeling hasn't changed. I don't think the shoe is any slower now from when it was brand new. And this is a neutral road running shoe with this really soft, squishy foam. And even with that combo, it's still a pretty stable feeling ride and I think that's mostly because the platform of the shoe is so wide especially here in the forefoot so if you're a runner especially a high mileage runner and you're looking for a shoe to put tons of miles on the Nike Invincible 3 could be an awesome option for you and then if you're looking for something a little bit more versatile you could look elsewhere at other shoes like the Asics Nova Blast 3 that's a shoe that can do pretty much everything the Nike Invincible can but it's also a shoe that can kind of cross over into that faster running type stuff uh, maybe also a shoe like the new on cloud surfer that's another shoe that handles a huge range of paces really nicely 
And then as far as price goes, it retails for 235 Canadian or 180 US. And that's certainly a premium price, but I think for a shoe that you're gonna get tons and tons of use out, that's a fair price. I would imagine I'm gonna get at least 700K out of my pair before I have to retire them. And I usually retire my shoes a lot earlier than a lot of other runners. So overall, I think the Nike Invincible 3 is mostly good for one thing, but it does that one thing really, really well, and that is easy running. Uh, anything from like a short, easy 5K recovery all the way up to a long run. I'm pretty sure I've taken mine to like 20 miles and there was no issue. So anyways, I hope you liked my full review on the Nike Invincible 3. Let me know down below in the comments if you have any questions or if I left anything out. Like always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.